38, verse 1 says, I'll praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praises. And I'll worship towards the holy temple. So this morning, let us, with our hearts, begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Begin to call him sweet names. Thank him for his mercies. For he has kept us. And we are not alive by ourselves. Our God is faithful. He is the King of glory. Is the I am that I am. The immortal, the invisible, the only wise God. Father, will give you praise, O God. We worship you. Lord, be exalted. Take all the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. is my desire to honor you. Lord, we are my heart. I worship you. Oh, all I am, we you 
Father, we bless you, we worship you, the King of kings, Lord of lords. Ancient of days, there is none like you. You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Father, we bless your holy name, for there is none like you, God. We worship you. Father, we worship you, we give you all the glory, all the honor. You who made the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You who created time, stepped out of time just to control the time that you created. Who is like you? Who is like you in all the earth? Father, there is none, there is none like you. Lord, we worship you. Father, we exalt you, we exalt you. Be thou highly exalted, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Take absolute control of our lives, O God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Give him a shout of praise. He's worthy of our praise. Today is our Thanksgiving day, so we'll be taking you to West Africa. Father, we bless you, Lord. So give him a clap. Hey. He's on to Jesus. Hey. Mm. If I were an eagle, I would lift myself, spread my wings and fly. If I were a lion, I would run into the jungle and give the loud. Yes, I will rise early in the morning and shine my light so bright. If I was an angel, I would sound the alarm for the whole of creation to bow at your feet. Hey, come here, see your lower room. I have come to give you toilet, to give you worship. Hey, come here, I see Baba. I have come to give you toilet, to give you toilet, to give you worship. Hey, the great and mighty God. I have come to give you toilet, to give you toilet, to give you worship. Oh, come here, see. I have come to give you toilet, to give you toilet, to give you worship. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Woo. Up above your head. Mm. Hey, if I was a little child, I would sing and shout for joy. And if I was a star, you know, I would use my force power. If I was a shining star, I would illuminate everywhere. And if I was the son of the governor, I would make everybody draw us out the Worship that only you deserve. Hey, I will look for beautiful names like a lave ural. And I will go on so long, but I will eat it. Burka, I tell one in Mofia. 
Obama, be Obama on red. I Madman who look into the sea and say the fishes were a mistake. Even the Babylonians can testify that there is only one Jehovah. Who are you to tell me that my Yahweh, my Shekinah doesn't exist? He's the consuming fire. Oh, he's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Him alone will I serve. Oh, for the rest of my days. Cause he 
your excellency yes we bow at the feet of the king that you are we give you glory honor praise is your majesty ruler maker oh your excellency oh we bow at the feet of the king that you are
just Lord Joe. You are a great God. Say your word, God. You are not just people. You are not just Lord. You are just Lord Joe. You are a great God. Give me thanks. Aha. God. Today is our Thanksgiving day and I'll be the first to testify. So after service on Friday, I went home and I couldn't breathe. Fast forward to early morning on Sunday. I went to four different hospitals. They took my vitals. They saw nothing wrong. I went to work. My boss described that I looked like an elephant was sitting on my chest. I went to other hospitals. Still they checked and they couldn't see anything. The doctors couldn't seem to notice what was wrong with me. But the Lord says, bring your strong reasons. Remember his words. And the devil was playing tricks on my mind as well. But I remembered his words. He said, I will not die but live. He said, the number of my days I will fulfill. He said healing is the children's bread. He said no, the sun shall not smite me by day. He says the moon will not smite me by night. And I called on my father. <laughs> I had to use an inhaler to breathe from Sunday. But by Wednesday, all symptoms completely disappeared. Father, we give you praise this morning because only you would have done it. There is nothing you cannot do covenant keeper there is nothing you cannot do Jehovah overdo yes, I have tasted of your love I have seen your mighty works mountain mover my lover on your name hey there is nothing you cannot heal 
protocol breaker there is nothing you cannot cure Jehovah over duo I have tasted of your love I have seen your mighty works mountain mover my lover on your money mama while all these were happening I tried to rehearse because I knew I was to sing today if you don't have air in your lungs how can you sing I opened my mouth to sing but I couldn't but I reminded my father I have to worship you I have to worship you hey I have tasted of your love <laughs> I have seen your mighty power mighty mover my lover on your money there is nothing you cannot do protocol breaker there is nothing you cannot do Jehovah over duo I have tasted of your love I have seen your mighty works mountain mover my love on your money Father we worship you Hey, where will I be without you? Where will I be without you? There's no me without you. Hey, where will I be without you? Where will I be without you? Where will I be without you? There's no me without you. You are Yahweh. 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 Alpha, Alpha, and Omega. You are Yahweh. You are. You are. your righteousness you are left not because of what you, what you can do or what you know you are left not because of who you are not because of your intelligence of the word of God you are left not because that you are who you are you are left because his mercy kept you the Bible says it's by his mercy we are not consumed for his compassion has not failed somebody give me the glory this morning thank you for his power have you come to see any man this morning I have not come to see anyone. I have come to see the Yahweh, the ancient of days. If you understand the meaning of the song, you will open your mouth this morning and give it all the names. Call him the best name he knows. He is the Yahweh, the ancient of days. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the immortal, the invisible God. 
Kamosha bregas ketia bara. Reke kasu brega de bosha. Ma brega de skopala moshia. Somebody give me the glory this morning. Thank you for His power. Kamosha brega bara. We worship you, Yahweh. We worship you, Yahweh. We worship you, the awesome God. We magnify you this morning, Father. We thank you. Thank you, the Prince of Peace. Thank you, the Elohim. You are with us for our praise. We worship you. You are the Yahweh, the Immortal, the Invisible. You are the Yahweh, the Only Wise God. You are the Yahweh, the Prince of Peace. You are the one in the center of the circle of the earth. You are the ancient of days, the bright morning star. You are the consuming fire. You are the maker of a new day. Somebody give me the glory this morning. I'm not hearing your voice. I'm not hearing your voice, somebody. Somebody, I'm not hearing your voice. Some people died yesterday. Some people dropped. Not because of your righteousness, God kept you. It's by His mercy. It's by His mercy. He said, Your righteousness is again fit like before Him. Somebody open your mouth this morning. Give me the glory. Labo Shabragades Kede Brada Moskia Mana Moshia Daba Ere Bregades Kumba Labo Shimbragadaboski Adabori Adaboa Sakaboro Shibrada Kanamos somebody thinking this morning. Give me the glory. Give me the glory. Give me the glory. He's wonderful, he's awesome. All the glory must be to him this morning. All the glory must be to him in your life, in your job, in your career, in whatever you are doing. Somebody give me the glory. He said, No man can take the glory to himself. The glory must be to him. The glory must be to him. Kamo Shabradaboskia. Almighty, we bless you this morning. We magnify you. Koroski Radabosha. Kapalamosia. Makalabo Bregadabosia. Babu said that Christ is the end of the law. Think of what God has done. Christ is the work of Christ. It's the work of God upon our life. Somebody thank him for dying for you. Thank him. The Bible said, even when we are in the sinner, Christ have died. How much more now? You didn't do anything for Christ to pay the price. He came to you when you was rotten in sin. When you was in pain. When things are not working well, he came. He came and saved you. He said, what manner of love that the Father has shown to us. And even though when we are a sinner, he have come. This morning, have the Holy Ghost, add the Father to purify you with the blood. He said, "What is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou art done him with glory and honor." But the Bible said, "And we see not all things put under him, but we see Jesus Christ." This morning, the Father look in you; He see Jesus Christ. He see the blood that was shed, the blood that spake better things, the blood that redeemed you from sins, from sorrow. Somebody ask the blood to cleanse you this hour. The Bible said in Hebrew 8 verse 12, He said, Be merciful to our unrighteousness, our sins, our iniquity. The Bible said, He said, No, no more. The Bible said, Who we have redemption through His blood, forgiveness of sins. Somebody ask the Holy Ghost, whatever that will be a hindrance this morning, to His moving your life, to His power. And the Holy Ghost of purify. He said, It's a purifier. It's a purifier with the, with, with the Spirit. He said, It is free that we are the flesh. Prophet Anderton, asking to manifest his power. It's not by madman power. It's by his spirit. Bible says it is the spirit that quicken it. And the Holy Ghost to quicken you this morning by showing you mercy. Let it be a wicked man. Kamo Shabra Kadeskalaba. Rebecca Skobria. Malebo Shabra Indaskapalaba. Zebreke Skotoskia. Mambreke Duskopada. Zebreke Deboskia. Ma Embreke Duskopada. Lastly, add the Holy Ghost to have his way this morning. Shana Moria, ask him to have his way this morning. Kabosha, Zebra Gadaboski Ababa, ask him to have his way this morning. Kaboshi Bragadaboskia, ask him to have his way this morning. Kaboshi, oh, Imarama, you are seated on that throne. Kamoshi, brother. Have your way this morning. Oh, Imarama, you are seated on the throne. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you this morning. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you because you are wonderful. We are alive not because of what we can able to do or what we achieve or our righteousness, but by your mercy. The Bible said, it's by your mercy we are not consumed for your compassion they never fail. See, they are new every morning. They are new every second. They are new every time. You are the intelligent that brought time. You are the one that sits in the center of the God earth. The habitant there are the gospel of your eyes. You are the consuming fire. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask you
to saturate the service. Oh, you are here already from the worship to the praise, even right now. But we need more of you. We ask more of you. We ask more of your power, more of your grace. Grace everything that will happen in this service. And let each and every one have a reason to say, I'm happy that I came in the praises. Take you the old song of there's no one like you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Please, let's have our seat. We'll be taking our text this morning from the book of John 12. John 12, 20 to 26. John 12, 20 to 26. And it says, Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was born Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. In turn, Andrew told Philip, told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 26, the last. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servants will be also. If anyone serves me, let him, him, my father, will honor. I pray the word of the Lord continually be in our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to believe that the AC is affecting us. Hallelujah. Amen. With a smile on our face and a wave. Just give a distance, social distance welcome to everyone. A smile and a wave to someone by your side. A smile and a wave. A social distance welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we invite the choir to lead us even as we take our offering and, and our tithes. Hallelujah. Church, can we rise and our feet, please, as we give God praise? I serve a God who is mighty. Hallelujah. I serve a God who is mighty. Yo, yo, yo. His God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hey. Call him a miracle. Miracle, Baba. I serve a God who is powerful. Hey. Hallelujah. Mighty, hey. mighty, mighty. mighty. Yo, yo, yo. His God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Call him a miracle. Miracle, Baba. Oh, you serve a God who is Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
your hands begin to give him thanks begin to give him thanks tell him to take your hearts to take everything offer yourself even as you offer your substance to him give him thanks father we thank you for this opportunity you have given to us to give 
we, 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 do, we don't just give you, oh God, our substance. We give you our heart. We give you ourselves. Take all, oh God, and may your kingdom reign. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's shout it better. Amen. Amen. Let's have our seat, church. Nobody understands what God has done for you. I don't know about you. I would say for the choir. Nobody understands what God has done for us. And that's why we praise him the way we do. Amen. Amen. And I believe that's your testimony too. This morning as we sing, I want you to join us and just give God glory. Hallelujah. For all you've done for us, God. We've come to lift you and adore you, Jesus. We've come to exalt you, Lord. The rising of the sun till it's going down. Your faithfulness will show. Your mercies are new. From the rising of the sun till it's going down. Your faithfulness will show. Your mercies is ever new. The rising of the sun till it's going down. His faithfulness, your faithfulness is yes, sure. Your mercy is ever new. From the rising stage, from the rising of the sun till it's going till down. It's going down. His faithfulness, your faithfulness is sure. sure. Your mercy is ever new. If I dance, it won't be enough. If I 
We proclaim you as Lord Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, that's why I sing. Oh, that's why I dance. Oh, that's why I shout for joy. I shout for joy.
Oh Lord, my God, when I hear a song Spirit of the living. Oh, we worship you, we give you praise. Wherever you are, speak well of him. Give him all the thanks for what he's done in your life. Say, God, I thank you for this great moment to be in your presence this morning. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I thank you for this great moment. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus, mighty and powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to talk to God this morning. Say, Father, Father. talk to me in this service in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, talk to me in this service in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we bless your holy name. For in Jesus, mighty and powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be seated in the presence of the Most High. Amen. Today is our Thanksgiving service. Uh, we're basically supposed to be talking about Thanksgiving. But the Lord said, speak about the fruitful grain of wheat. You know, I look at it, I said, it's a Thanksgiving service. Why do I need to preach again this morning? We're supposed to be thanking God. He said, but talk about the fruitful grain of wheat that deals with seed. And also that talks about the harvest. All right. But before I do that, I just want to do two things. First, you know, why the choir was ministering and it came to my spirit that God spoke to someone, but you are running like Jonah. He said, the more you run, the longer you prolong it. He said, it is better you answer me now so that you won't be in the belly of the fish. Our God is merciful. Whatever he has spoken to you, I want you to obey and you will see God manifest in your life in Jesus' name. Now, before I read 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7, I will share a testimony Second Kings 4, 1 to 7, please. All right, before we get there, first, I just want to thank God for my family is because on May 9th, which is two days from now, because I know it will be after now, I'll be celebrating 12 years of my marriage. And I just want to give God all the thanks. And I also want to thank him for my beautiful wife. You know, I usually call her my Yuri Yuri, you know, uh, God has been so awesome, he gave us four beautiful children, and it has been a very great journey. That thing I'm sure about life is, whatever the Spirit of God has tested, it is tested forever. And I give God all the glory for this great direction in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to use the opportunity, she's not here anyway, just to tell her one more time, that I love you so much, and I will always love you. If it's possible for us to have a marriage in heaven, I will still apply to get married to you. And this is it for me to you. I love you from the depth 
of my heart. So if you love your wife, if you love your husband, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Hallelujah. Let me share the testimony why we wait for the audiovisual. Otherwise, just get me my Bible and I'll read it from there. Hallelujah. Second Kings 4, 1 to 7. Just get me the Bible why I share the testimony. I'll read it from there. Amen. I just want to assure us this morning about the faithfulness of God. Uh, sorry, just give me a minute, please. All right. I'm already there. All right. Uh, some few uh, months ago, I want to use this to encourage you before we quickly talk about the word of God. Uh, sometime in, my, in our lives, we may be thinking, uh, why is God not giving me a job? But we forgot that you slept, you woke. We also forgot that God has kept you. He took you from where you were before. And he brought you to where you are now. Now, if the enemy cannot succeed you when you were born, why do you think that the enemy will succeed you now? The fastest way for the enemy to get you is to abort the plan of God concerning your life from the beginning. But the reason why God has kept you to now is because he wants you to glorify his name. Now, no matter what you are passing through, I want you to thank God like never before because everything is working for your good and for your upliftment if only you can see. And that's why you're going to speak this morning in this service as you thank God. You say, God, open my eyes to see your power consigning your counsel in my life. And as you see, believe me, he say, there is a power that comes from within that keeps you going. Now, the testimony is this, not to waste your time. They put a check uh, for me and my family, and we got an SMS that we have a case in the police station. So I was wondering, uh, where is this check coming from and things like that. So I told my wife, I said, better still, let's just go to the police station so that we can know what the check is all about, all right? And when we got there, we realized that it was a check that was already paid, all right, when my wife delivered at the time, a long time ago, I think the accountant forgot to, uh, what they call it, to update the system. And there was another check that was also put, which basically was not legal, something like that, I don't know. But when we got there, we saw the case and all that. They said they're going to take the case to the court. And that by the morning, there's going to be a proceeding, which means we must pay 2,000 dirham to close the case or something, all right? So, at that point, she was applying for a visa. Why she applied for the visa? The visa didn't go through. Because, you know, once there's a police case, until you finish that case, your visa will not come out. That's the procedure. So, the visa was pending and all that. So, we said, okay, let's go for the case, for the proceeding. And we took the 2,000 dirham, as they have stated already, all right? So, while we were going, so I was asking God that, I am your servant. Why are all these things happening to me? Why didn't you reveal these things to me? You know, I was just talking and all that. So, and I told God, I said, if you are the almighty God, glorify your name. And that was all. So while we were going, as soon as we got to the police station, it was very difficult for us to park. So I was trying to park. You know, the place is so congested. And the next thing, an alert came that my wife's visa was out. So the company called her and said, have you paid the money? Have you sorted the case? We said, no. They said, then how did it happen? We said, we don't know. We are still in the car trying to go to the case and all that. So the visa came out and things like that. So as soon as we got to the police to see what the case is, trying to pay the money, and he took the check and said, this is rubbish. And he just canceled everything. Say, class, everything canceled. We didn't pay the money. The case was canceled just like that. And the visa still came out. The Lord proved to me that even in that time of impossibility, he's the impossibility specialist. When you look at things sometimes, you think, 
How is this thing going to be possible? When you know here where we live, anything you do is all about fine and you must pay. For you to go with such an amount, 2,000 dirham, they said, no, forget about it. Leave the money and that was all. They canceled it and that was how it went. And we gave God all the glory and adoration. In 2 Kings 1 of 4, I think I want to read it from here. It's better because I want every one of us to see it because of what God is said to do. He said, now, there cried a certain woman. Now, when the Bible uses the word certain, the Bible is trying to describe how determined or how devout that particular situation is. So, he said, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. So, when he had an encounter with Elisha, there was one thing that was key here. The Bible said, first, he cried. So, today, somebody is going to pray like that. But he said, she cried. And secondly, she had a case. And what was the case? She said, that knowest that thy servant died. Sorry, that servant did fear the Lord. And this was a testimony of the husband. And this was a case that he presented before Elisha. And he went for it. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And you know basically this is what we do. Please just keep going to the next one. You know this is what happened basically in our life. There are certain people here that their parents they've used them for collateral. Either directly or indirectly. You know there are some certain people. The parents will say I want to get this. What Whatever it will cost me, it doesn't matter as long as I get what I'm wanting. So, if you look at it, they use the sons as bond servant. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? This was a question. Tell me. Alright, Jesus has said, you should ask him. He said, whatsoever you ask, he said, he will hear you. He said, then tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, thy hand men had not anything in the house. Save a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all the neighbors. Even now, if you look at it, this was a woman who was going through a situation. This was the most ridiculous question anybody can ask someone who is going through a particular pain or situation. Like, for example, someone is saying, uh, I've been trusting God for a child for over years, and he's asking you, do you have one child or something? It doesn't make any meaning, all right? Now, he's asking her, what do you have? This is a woman who has sold everything she had, and she came to Elijah for rescue. And when you go for that, he said, even empty the vessel. Borrow not a few, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door, open thee, and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside which is full. Now, where I'm going in this is this. Even in this situation, what do you have? He said, I have a pot of oil. Now, the next thing he told her, go borrow vessels. Does it correlate with the situation? Somebody is saying, this is what I have. And you are telling the person, Go borrow more vessels. The first thing that will come to your mind is, what does he want to do with those vessels that he wants me to bring? But again, when you look at it, she cried. She had a case. She asked and she obeyed the man of God. And these are principles we must follow as believers. Now, you see what happened. After she obeyed, what was amazing, when she brought all the pots, the man of God said, start putting the oil, whatever one that is full, just put that one aside. And as she kept doing it, the miracle did not happen in the hand of Elisha. But the miracle happened in the hands of the woman and her children. And there was multiplication. Now, where I'm going is this. As she began to pour in the vessel, the Bible made me understand that it was the vessel that ran out. But God was sufficient enough. So, no matter what your situation is, God can never be exhausted. And this is where I'm going to. Our God can never be exhausted. It doesn't matter how long you've been trusting God. That situation cannot exhaust God. You see what happened there? He said the vessel was full. And he told them, go get more vessels. They said the vessels are finished. Because our God is inexhaustible. You are trusting God for 10 million. 10 million is too small for the Lord to give to you. But we must understand the principles of obtaining from the kingdom dimension. And when you look at it, he told the woman, he said, alright, go sell the oil, 
so that you can be set free from the creditor, then you can use the remaining one to take care of your family. I want to pray for someone this morning as you lift your hands wherever you are. Your hands will be a hand of miracle. That whatsoever you lay your hands upon, there will be multiplication until there is fullness in your life. I said, Lord God Almighty, it shall be made manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are awesome. We give you all the glory and adoration. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. Now, the fruitful grain of wheat. We're looking at John 12, 20 to 26. Can someone have this, please? The fruitful grain of wheat. In John 12, from verse 20 to 22, he said, and there were certain Greeks. You see, he has used the word certain again. Like he said, we talks about being determined and devout. Whenever the scripture uses the word certain, there is an information he's trying to pass to us. Or, but there is a determined information that we need to know. He says, there were certain Greeks requested to see Jesus to be admitted into his presence. And here it talks about what? Seeking. All right. So there was a seeking. Like we saw here, there was a crying. All right. There was an asking. All right. From the asking and there was obedience. And from obedience, he said there was fullness of God's presence that is inexhaustible. All right. Now, the key point here about the Greek is that sensible sinners are very desirous of having spiritual sight of Christ. And this is the truth. And this is one point I want you to pay attention, the fruitful grain of wheat. And as you apply this principle in your life, believe me, you will be like that woman that your oil will never run dry in the name of Jesus. You know, most of the time, what pains me when I remember uh, John 11 verse 35 when the scripture said Jesus wept. You know, sometimes what pains me when I see believers is because believers just suffer for no reason. Why? Because they have grown with a notion, either because of religion or because they want to satisfy the economic collapse of the land. But when you have an understanding of God's word, believe me, I say you will be a living miracle in every dimension of your life. I don't have time to share testimony because this is Thanksgiving service. But subsequently, we'll be talking about the power of God. Now, he says sensible sinners are very desirous of having spiritual sight of Christ. But one problem that I have, believers are not desirous to have that sensible sight of Christ. Even amongst the believers, that is where you find the most dangerous things that happen amongst us. But look at where I'm going to, the question. He said, how can we meet Jesus in our lives and introduce him to others who are searching for him is key. If you want to walk in divine supernatural upliftment, then you need to answer this question this morning. Let me read the question to you again. How can we meet Jesus in our lives to introduce him to others who are searching him? So that means you have to have him before you can introduce him to others. And your life must be made evidence before you can speak to Jesus to others. You know, there are certain places you will be. It is only your life that can transform the people. Because they may not have the opportunity to read the Bible. But you may just be the Bible that someone will read. Alright. Now, when you go further there, it says, Our life plays a very big role when we talk about seed and harvest. When we talk about the fruitful grain of wheat, seed and harvest. So, our lives play a very big role through one evangelism and that's why when you look at it today a lot of people don't care about it sometimes when we talk about evangelism people feel they want me to evangelize because they want the church to be full but should I tell you the truth even if you don't evangelize people will look for where to serve God true before I came to church this morning someone has messaged me I don't know if the brother is here to find the location in the church not that the evangelism team spoke to that particular brother even from where we come from naturally there is a church here there is a church facing a church people naturally just go to church but the power of evangelism is a mandate that has been given to you for signs and wonders to follow you so when you ask yourself 
Why are signs and wonders not following me? It is not because you are not holy. It is because you have not obeyed. Have you asked yourself, you know I said it the other time. How come that the Adeboye is still doing go a fishing? With the number of churches that he has. I was looking at Dr. Paul Enenche in the market square. I don't know if you've seen it. He was evangelizing inside the rain and the rain was falling on him. And he was still propagating the gospel. And this is a man that has a hundred capa 100,000 capacity church. I think it's enough for him not to evangelize. He understands the principles of the kingdom dimension. And that is why they still evangelize. When you look at the life of Rehan Bonki, you saw how many souls he won. Over millions of souls before he dies. They understand this principle. But we come to church just because we want to satisfy our desire, not having the knowledge of the word of God, which is key. And this is what we're going to be seeing today. You want signs and wonders to follow you? You want to meditate as you meditate, God, I need this job. You have not prayed, but it comes to reality. Why? Because you have obeyed God. And that is the truth. And that's what we can see in Mark 16. He said, go ye and preach, for these signs shall follow you. And this is the word of God. So our lives plays a very big role through evangelism. And as we gather here to pray, our life play a very big role. And that's why when you go to our gatherings today, you see the man of God decreeing people don't want to pray anymore. People just want to be like a seed. When you plant the seed, they don't care how the seed is being knitted. They don't care how the seed is baked. They don't care how the weed is being removed. All they care about is the harvest. But we must understand that there is a process in life. As we gather here to pray, your life must reflect the king of glory. In our Bible story, people don't care about listening to the word of God anymore. The word of God doesn't make sense to anyone anymore. But it is the word of God that validates the miracle and the testimonies that you have. There is no testimony without God's word, believe me. And that's why God told Ezekiel, he said, speak to that dry bone. And the spirit of God manifested it into power. So people are no more interested about Bible study. And now you are a believer in a room. Your Bible study is going on. It is the unbeliever that is telling you, ah, your church is on. You are saying, you cannot draw such to the kingdom of God. He said, we help discover the Lord Jesus today. And that's why Romans 10, 17 said, faith cometh by yet. There is a hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith does not come by prayer. So if I'm coming here today, I'm saying, church, I want to pray and release faith upon you. I'm just joking. It means I don't know what I'm doing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Because it is the word of God that transforms the heart of a man. And that is his word today. In John 12, on verse 22 to 24, he says, sensible sinners are very desirous of having spiritual sight of Christ. And that is why the Greeks, those certain Greeks, they came to Jesus. They wanted to see him and they wanted to come to the knowledge of him. Now, in John 12, 22 to 24, they told Jesus. Who were the ones that told Jesus? This was speaking about Philip because they approached Philip. And Philip spoke to Andrew. And when they agreed, what happened? He said, they both went together to speak to Jesus. And that brought me to the... To, 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 sorry, that brought me to the knowledge of God's word in Matthew 18 verse 19. He said, as two touching a thing, as they agree, what happened? He said, that thing comes into reality. So when they spoke to Philip, Philip didn't go to Jesus, but he spoke to Andrew. They, come to an, they came to an agreement and they went to Jesus and they spoke to Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the son of man be glorified. So when you look at it, what is the correlation between the Greek coming to Jesus to become, to know him, to be in his presence and that the hour has come that the son of man may be glorified. So we know the history. I don't want to go through theology that talks about the Christianity being for the Israelites, talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. We know the Gentiles were sinners and the reason why Jesus came was to reconcile both Jews and Gentiles into the fold of the Lord God Almighty. So when he spoke there, he said the hour has come because he saw that the Greeks, we were the Gentiles, were already coming. But there was something that was so striking there. 
Now, the key point I want to draw from there is, this illustrates the hour of death. When he said the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, that talks about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, so that he can go, that the Spirit will be made manifest, and his disciples can go to preach to the ends of the earth. That has to do with the Gentile, which is very key. And that's why I spoke about evangelism. So the essence why Jesus died was to reconcile both Jews and what? Gentile alike together so that we may all come to the knowledge of God and to eternal glory to come. In Ephesians 5 verse 16, in Ephesians 5 verse 16, the Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are what? They are evil. So when the Bible speaks about redeeming the time, let me read the scripture to you that will amaze you in John 9 verse 4. In John 9 verse 4, he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can walk. So the redeeming the time has to do with propagating the gospel with signs and wonders and miracles. And this is what the word of God was saying. So when he said the hour has come, it means that why has come for me to die, to be resurrected, so that I can be seated at the right hand of God to release his spirit upon you and I. So when you come to Jesus, he said the spirit of God comes upon you, which is the spirit of power and of sound mind, the spirit of love, so that you can do exploit. So the question to you this morning, has your life replicated the king of glory? It is a big question. So why do you wait for me to say unto the pastor, praise on me, that that thing will not happen? Oh, the pastor is saying it because he doesn't have power, but that is not true. And that's why in John 21, 17, he told Peter, he called him three times. He said, feed my sheep. The reason why we see things that are happening in our society today, he said, is because the priests, they have not taught the people enough. And that's why in Isaiah 4, verse 6, he said, my people are perished because of lack of knowledge. He said, on the last day, he said, the priests, they will give account of what they've done with the word of God. And it's very key. The word of God is power. In John 12, verse 24, he went, he said, Verily, verily, which is certainly, certainly, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, he abided alone, but if he die, he bringeth forth much fruit. So, if you look at it, what is the correlation of this to the Greek? If you notice, he never spoke. As soon as they told him that these people want to see you, Jesus started speaking. And that's why he started talking about the hour. And now he's talking about in John 12, 24 that except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, he abided alone. But if he die, he bringeth much fruit. He didn't use the word he bringeth fruit. But the word what? Much fruit. And when you look at it from the dimension of the spirit here, we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit upon your life. And that is why when you give your life to Jesus, he says such a person, he's died to this world and you are risen in his glory. And what happened? There is a manifestation of the fruit of God upon your life and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has to do with the gift of healing, prophecy and all that. So when you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, he said there will be love, there will be joy, there will be peace, there will be temperance. So if you don't have joy, then there is something wrong with you. And this is what you need to ask yourself this morning. A life without peace, how do you propagate peace to others? It's a full of peace with all men. Because without holiness, no man can see God. Hebrews 12 verse 14. One thing I want you to note here. He said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, he abided alone. But if he die, he bringeth much fruit. Note, the seed cannot produce new life by themselves. They must first be planted in the earth. Before they can grow and produce fruit. We know that is what it is. Basically, you know, when you have to plant in the earth, what happens? And one thing I want you to pay attention to when we talk about fruitfulness, it is very key, like I said from the beginning. When you plant a seed, what happens? You need to water the seed, right? You need to watch the seed. You need to know when to remove the weeds. You need to knit. You need to break. There are threshing and all that. That is the waiting period upon the time of harvest. And when you look at the time of sowing just a particular seed, like the corn seed, he used that as an illustration, a metaphor for this scripture that talks about the death of Jesus Christ. Why did he use the single corn? You know what happened? He said when the 
produce comes. He said there is diversity of fruits everywhere. One becomes a million. But before that can happen, there is a waiting time. This is the time that people run away from. And this is what they don't want to tell you. Because if they tell you, you will run away from the church. Because they know you are not patient enough. And which is the truth. So they won't tell you about the waiting time. But they will tell you, the reeds are sowing. As soon as you sow, the reeds are lifting up. So when you sow, in the waiting time, if it doesn't come, that is why you lose hope. But if you have the knowledge that there is a time you have to water. There is a time you have to trash the place. There is a time you have to till the soil. Believe me, that's why farmers can wait for their crops. And that is truth. Otherwise, if you've not farmed before and they tell you, don't worry, just plant the seed and believe me, it will multiply. As soon as you do that, you will not even sleep. You know that every morning you are going to watch one year, two years. Some will take five years. You will lose hope. It will get to a point you just go and approve the seed and throw it away that this is nonsense. So you're looking for a one that has already been produced. And this is why people run from place to place. Why? Because the patient is not developed. That's why James 1, 1 to 3 says, count it all joy when you pass through those times. Because it develops your patience and endurance to the breakthrough that the Lord has for you. I believe that is a word for someone this morning. Now, when you look at the seed, in Matthew 13, the seed connotes the word. We remember that parable Jesus gave. Now, in Matthew 13 verse 4, the seed, I said, connotes the word of God. And this is where I want to talk about the power of God before we proceed and close today. In Matthew 13 verse 4, it says, And when he sowed, some seeds fell on the wayside, and fowls came and devoured them up. Why? Because there was no fertile ground to absorb the seed. He spoke about four different grounds. But he spoke about the fertile ground. And what is that seed? He speaks about the word of God. And what is the ground? The ground is your heart. If your heart don't absorb the word of God. He said that heart can never communicate the glory of God to other parts of the body. And this is the word of God. So when the word of God comes into you, when you absorb the word of God into your heart, he said there is a diffusion of that word to every area of your body. And when that happens, he said there is a communicating grace upon that diffusion to the exterior. And that is what people see as the glory of God upon your life. And that's why you can speak to that situation that I command this brother to stand up and the brother will stand. Why? Because there's an absorption of the word of God with belief and faith. And this is the power of God's word. But when you don't have the understanding of this word of God, believe me, you see what happened in Matthew 13 verse 4. It says, and when the, he sowed, some seeds fell on the wayside, and fowls come, they devour them up. And that's why when some people come here, when they hear the word of God, because the word is not absorbed, when they live here, it said the enemy comes to devour the heart of that one. And that's why Proverbs 4.23 say, guide that heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of it are issues of life. So if the heart is gone, believe me, he said there is no fertile ground for you to bear much fruit. It's key. So the reason why you are not bearing fruit, it is not because one man is standing in your village. Forget about that man. In Obadiah 117, let me say it again. He said when you are in Mount Zion, he said you are there to possess your possession. Because why? You are on Mount Zion because you've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear life. There is a shift in kingdom. So when you understand there is a shift in kingdom, why do you still believe that there is a man that is throwing bead in your family? It's because you don't understand the power that you are prayed in. So until you allow the word of God to be absorbed in your heart, when those negative words comes, he says you don't care. Why? Because you know that the plan of God for you is of good and not of evil to bring you a hope and a future. And that's why in John 10, 10, he said, I am come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He said the devil come to kill, steal and destroy. So, destruction is not the disposition of God. And this is what we must understand today. If you hold on to the word of God, believe me, from today, you will be a walking miracle. Wherever you go, when you see me, you will say, Pastor, I thank you because you have spoken the word. Wherever you go, when you say it, it comes to reality. I have listened to me. They were having a convention at the camp. And Osha spoke to someone that was crippled. The person came back. It wasn't the general overseer. 
He was holding a meeting. Just an usher had an encounter because he wanted to go up there. He couldn't go. And the guy looked at it. Where was that? I command you in the name of Jesus. Walk, my brother. And the guy began to walk. And this is the power of having the knowledge of God's word. But when you don't have the knowledge of God's word, you will keep coming to me. I want to live long. And that's why I'm telling you the truth so that you won't keep coming to me. It is a pleasure for you to come to me. But it is greater pleasure for you to understand the God that you serve. That is the news I bring to you this morning. Now, he said, he said in that Matthew 13, 4, he said some seeds fell on the wayside and fowls came and devoured them up. The key point there is, what is sown in the earth is subject to decay. He said what rise, rises is incorruptible. And that we can see in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42. So whatever you have sown, he said there is a decay, there is a death that brings about the incorruptible, that brings about much fruit. When you understand this, nothing will move you again in this life. Who is that man that is so strong, that will say a thing concerning me in my life, and I will shake, I will laugh more. Why? The reason why I rejoice over such is because the person wants to come to the knowledge of God. A boy once told me a long time ago, he said, Pastor, I will take your name to a deity. Give me three days, you will swell and burst. I burst into laughter. I was so happy. I said, please, when is the challenge going to start? Because he thought I wanted to show power. I said, no, I am happy because now you will now come to the knowledge of what? Of his truth. After three days, I called him. I said, bro, you didn't go again. He started laughing. Amen. The death of Christ is a fruit of righteousness. I want you to know that. And considerable end to abundance and sufficiency in all fruitfulness and for its usefulness for food. Now, listen to this part. He said the death of Christ is a fruit of righteousness and considerable end to abundance and sufficiency in all fruitfulness. Meaning, if the Spirit of God is upon you, you possess it, the dimension of the fruit of the Spirit. There's none left. So you can say, I have the fruit of the Spirit. I am impatient. You have some. You don't have some. It is not that. That is not the kingdom of God. He said there is all the sufficiency, abundance, and fullness of the fruitfulness of God upon your life. So you manifest all. Alright. He said for usefulness, when this is now manifested, what happened? He said for usefulness, for food, as Christ being the bread of life, and the finest of wheat. And this is the essence of the fruitfulness. The reason why you plant a seed, the seed dies and yield harvest. Why? It's because at the end you want to what? Get something from that fruit. So your life must be a fruit so that unbelievers can pluck from your fruit and become like you. So when you are a carrier of fruit and nobody plucks from you, it's either your fruit has decayed or there is something wrong with your fruit. Have you ever seen a ripe mango tree? For those who know what mango is, it's so ripe and you know you can just do like this and catch one. You know sometimes when we move around our streets, the neighborhood, you see mango, even when it's not yours, you just take one as long as you can assess it. So your life should be accessible. People must see Christ in you. People must see you and say, sister, there is something about you that is different. There's something about you. When people start telling you there's something they don't understand, it means you are in that realm and dimension. Because what they see, you may not see it. And that's why we must open our eyes to see God's power upon us. In John 12, 25 to 26, in John 12, 25 to 26, he said, He that loveth his life shall lose it. Did you hear that? So the story started with a certain Greek man, right? Who wanted to come to God's presence. And the whole story now changed to the hour, talking about a corn that dies, if he dies not, he abided alone. But if he does, he yield the rich harvest. Then he went further and started talking again. He said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Which means, whosoever is in love with the present temporal life, which takes all precaution to service it. You take all precaution to service this temporal life and rather than to expose that life to danger, chooses to deny the faith of Christ. You know, I was coming to evangelism yesterday 
while I was driving, I saw someone, she was trekking, you know, and I saw the way the person was, like, exhausted. And the Spirit of God ministered to me, see, he says, see, the things of life, they are very energetic. But when it comes to church, excuses are there. Have you asked yourself why? God must always understand. God waits. When it comes to the things of the church, there is laxity. It is only in the church you can come late, but in your walk you cannot. But God is greater than your walk. And this is what the scripture is saying. He said you take care of those temporal lives. Nothing, you don't want anything to happen to your job. He said, except God watcheth a city, the watchman watcheth in vain. I have seen people who were so rich and they became very poor. And I saw people who were poor and they became very rich. But I'm not saying God is punishing them. But I'm just telling you the jurisdiction of life. So people take care about your life. Someone said, I cannot wake up. It's too early, 9.30 to come to church. And I asked him, when do you go to work? 6 a.m. But it is church, 9.30, you cannot. And you want to walk in miracles? Can I prophesy we keep eating your money? And that is the truth. Can I go to your bedroom and keep eating your money? And that is the truth. So we cannot do it when it comes to God. And you want the reign of God's presence upon your life? It doesn't work that way. So we must understand the principle of the kingdom jurisdiction. It's a he that loves his life will lose it. Alright, and that talks about eternal glory to come. But what is striking to me there, it says, chooses to deny the faith of Christ Jesus. And that's why in the time of rapture, people will take the mark of the beast. Why? Because of temporal life. Those things you couldn't deny now, you cannot deny at the time of rapture. Because at that time, it will be more painful. I was looking at my phone when I was going to Abu Dhabi. You know, they said we have to do the COVID test. And I saw all the tests that I've done on system. Hmm. And I saw the vaccine. I said, aha. These are mock practices and exams. You know what it tells me? You cannot hide. When you want to buy, they will tell you to bring your phone. They'll be able to determine if you've taken the mark of the beast or not. If you cannot stand for Christ now, sir, you cannot stand later. The torture will be too much. The pains, the agony will be too much for you to deny the Lord Jesus. And when you do that, that talks about eternal damnation. And this is what lots of people they've done now because of their job they have denied Jesus Christ. Someone said, I lost my job. So my job first, God should see it. We are not talking about this because we want you to come to church for the seed to be full. After all, even when we were not here for one year, we propagated the gospel through online. But it is the kingdom truth I'm telling you today. What is the key point? Such believers come short of an eternal one. When you come short of an eternal one, then it is a big problem to live in a time like this. And look at what he said. And he that hated his life in the world shall keep it unto what? Eternal life. So the hating of life does not mean, it's not saying you should just hate yourself, kill yourself, don't dress up. That's not the point. The point is, taking the kingdom things first, beyond, above your life. And that is loving God above all things as you love yourself. This is the illustration of God's word here. He that hated his life. And that's why Paul can say to live is Christ and to die is gain. All right. He says, shall keep it unto eternal life. He shall appear to have spiritual life. In John 12, 26, I'm going to be fast now so we can round up. If any man serve me, this one is key. Let him follow me. Did you see that? If any man, woman, children, boy, girl, serve me, let him what? There is a following. You must follow Jesus. So my question to you this morning, who are you following? Don't follow me. I am a man. Do you know why? There are things you will see that will make you to say, mm, that will make you doubt. Because we are mortal men. That's why Hebrew 12 verse 2 says, looking unto what? Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. 
We have seen what have happened in our society today. You can hear, you saw this uh, man of God or this one did this, this did that. Why? Because they are men. I am not surprised when I hear such news. It is not new to me when you say a bishop fell into fornication. Because the Bible said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? He said only those that pleases God that can run away from the snare of an adulterous woman. But it is having the knowledge of God's word. Not how long you've been in church. There are two different things. And that's why Job in Job 42, 1 to 6, repented of his nominal knowledge. He said when he had an encounter with God, he cried for mercy. Because he never knew the God he served. But when he had an encounter, the Bible says he repented. Everything he lost came back in a hundredfold. So you must repent from that idea that you have that is not scriptural. If any man serve me, let him follow me. He said, as in exercise of graces of love, there is humility, there is patience, self-denial, and resignation of your will to the will of God in discharge of every duty as a believer. So if I ask every believer here now that how many of you talk to someone about Jesus during the week? None. Nobody. And we talk about fruitfulness as believers. So what is fruitful about that? He said that you may bear much fruit. To do what with the fruit? Have you seen a mango just walking on the street and saying, oh, I have fruit, I have mango. Come on, hey, come on, I have mango. And you just keep walking. There is an essence of the fruit. So that others will be fed from that fruit. People must feed from the grace of God upon your life. So I'm speaking to you today. When you live here, you are in a presence where someone is sick. Don't start running from ambulance. Go to that person. Lay your hands upon the person and say, By the power in the name of Jesus, be healed. He said, because at the mention of that name, every sickness will bow. Authority has been given to you. He said, we have been seated in heavenly places with him. He said, so that the intent of the manifest wisdom of God will be manifested to principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That is the wisdom he has given to you. You have it. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Shout to your neighbor. Say, are you afraid of your neighbor? It's your neighbor, principalities and powers. Say, neighbor. You possess the power of God. Say, neighbor. You are born of God. Say neighbor. I believe in God. Say neighbor. Whatsoever you speak on today. From now on. Shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus. If not because it is pandemic. I would have illustrated God's power here today. I would have called three people to come here. You will hold yourself. And I will tell the first person to speak the name of Jesus. You will see manifestation take place. It is not me saying it. But I will pick three random people who know Christ. And you see it happen here. But we can't do this because we are in pandemic. <laughs> Amen. If anyone serve me, say let him follow me. You know what the promise is? And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him, my father, honor. What honor do a man want? I don't need BSC. I need the honor of God. If God can honor me, child, I don't need anything. Because he can pick you from dunghill and set you amongst princes. And that's why he said, for by strength shall no man prevail. You may be a medical doctor, an engineer. There are people who are farmers who are more richer than you. It is not by power nor by mind. It's a him, my father, honors. You know what that means? There is a great esteem that God sees in you. When he looks at you, he looks at you with great honor and esteem. And that's why when a president comes in, because of the honor and esteem, what happens? You see everybody wants to stand up. There is this great respect naturally. Why? Because there is an honor upon his head. So when God sees you with honor, when you enter the dimension of principalities and power, they stand up because the child of God is there. This is what I'm telling you today. So know who you are. As we round up now, he said, by accepting his service, just as we're here, affording him his gracious presence here, 
not neglecting the gathering of brethren. If you have a brother who still sleeps, please bother him to come to God's presence. Even if not here, let him go to anywhere that is closer to him. Never neglect the gathering of brethren. It is key. Note, to see Christ, I just want to give you this key and I want you to absorb this key and this key will be made manifest upon your life. You want to see Christ today? One, you need to seek him. When you seek him, in Matthew 7, 7, what did he say? Ask, right? Seek, and you shall find. So when you seek him, you will find him. Just as those men, the certain Greeks, he said they seeked him, and they found him. All right. Two, improve your acquaintances with good people. You know why? For our increase in the knowledge of Christ, People are not acquainted with good people. You cannot leave this kind of gathering and you go home. You are talking about men of God. You don't need to. Your life must be filled with God's glory. This is not a time for you to sit and stand saying, Brother, hey, head is like this. His nose is bent. How does that propagate the gospel? You must speak to people that will increase your knowledge of God's word. Not someone when you tell this country is hard, you say, my brother, not true. No. Not people that makes the impossibility impossible. Because that is not the disposition of God. Because he's the impossibility specialist. Your gathering is key. The people you associate with is key. In that church, they feel they are too holy. How does that propagate the gospel? Look at that sister. She feels she's the one that loves God too much. How does that propagate the gospel? Look at that brother. If you go to his Facebook page, all about Jesus. How does that, you propagate the gospel? And this brings me, thank God, thank you Holy Spirit. I wanted to say it from the beginning, but I thank God Holy Spirit brought it back. You see, all those who their Facebook is propagating breast, you know, bomb bomb, all those things that will not lead people to Christ. Instead of leading people more to hell, Check it out. When you go, I've gone to a, a, what do you call it, a minister in a church, the Facebook page. I didn't see anything about Jesus. I said, if you're the minister here, I will remove you. It's your life. Most Facebook, WhatsApp. He said, you are sharing macaroni. And you know in that video, there's always a large boobs. An unbeliever sees it. You think your believer will remain the same. They cannot. Let's be truthful. I see some strange things on the Facebook page of people. And that's why some people will not add you as friends. There is one guy. I have added him one year. Till today he has never accepted my ad. I don't know why. Because they know what they do with the page. I'm sorry to say. Sorry sir. And that's why there is a brother here. I think his name is I, I, that's his, his Facebook name. Steve Bigo. This brother wearing the white. Go to his Facebook page. Every minute he propagates the gospel. That's to tell you I know every one of us. Just go to his page. Or you go to the brother. He's always preaching the gospel. This is the mandate that you have. You want signs and wonders to happen in your life? Then do this. Don't propagate macaroni. I'm not saying if you want to watch, it's for your good. But when you watch it into sin, that is where the problem is. Don't share page on your page as a believer that will not propagate the gospel of God. You are sharing massage. And you know those massage, whenever they put the picture, I don't know, you're walking, you know what they put in front of those massage pictures? And naked pictures of women and you're a believer, you're walking in a massage? No, 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 no. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Improve our acquaintances with God, with good people, for our increase in knowledge of Christ. Our attendance upon holy ordinances that talks to do with ceremony here, particularly the gospel, to see Jesus, depending on him, should be what? Encouraged. And that is what I'm doing to you today. I'm encouraging you to depend on God. But we all have different maturity when it comes to Christianity. But again, we have to build you up to that level where you don't need to come to me anymore. I'm not saying coming to me is wrong. But when you keep coming, I will keep giving you the word that will make you stop coming. So that you can depend on yourself. Because when I'm not there and the Ayamatanga appears, bam, what will you do? And the door is locked. What do you do? 
You're walking in the cemetery and there is a ghost. No one is there. What do you do when I'm not there? You speak the word of God. My, what is my recommendation this morning as we conclude? My recommendation is in John 12 verse 42. Sorry, John 12 verse 46. This is my recommendation this morning. Walk in light. That's it. He said, Whosoever believes in Jesus will not abide in darkness. So my recommendation is for uh, John 12, 46. Walk in light. You know the walk? It's not W-R-O-K. It's W-A-L-K. Walking always in the light of God. So that you can illuminate God's presence in your life to the generation to come. Conclusion. This narrative demonstrates the importance of having a teachable spirit. And that's why I said when the seed comes, you must what? Absorb the seed. So that there will be proper diffusion to every part of the body. And this can communicate the grace of God upon your life. So that the believer may bring forth much fruit to the glory of God. The reason why I want to speak upon your life for you to manifest is because I want God to be glorified. Testimony glorifies God. But salvation comes by confessing Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior that brings the Spirit of God upon your life. Testimony does not impact the Spirit of God upon your life. But coming to Jesus does. And that's why when Jesus healed, when he saw the blind man, he said, but go and do what? And see no more. I want you to write this and meditate on what this is. The multiplying of the redeemed. Do you know who the redeemed are? You know what the redeemed are, right? We know what the redeemed are. If you remember Revelation, he said when they were singing holy, holy. Do you know the only people that understood the song? He said the redeemed. Even the people didn't understand. It was only the redeemed that understood it. The multiplying of the redeemed was the magnifying of the redeemer. Did you get it? So when there is a multiplying of the redeemed, there is magnifying of the redeemer and there is a release of God's power upon your life. This is a key that I give you today. So it means talk to someone about Jesus. Don't cheat people. I said it at the workers meeting. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Most people may not like this one. But it's hard truth. When you go on Dubizu, as we pray now, when you go on Dubizu, it says, room to rent for Kabayan only, 350 bed space. But when it comes to us, room to rent, 750 the same bed space. The same apartment. We like to exploit one another. And you say you want signs and wonders? Jesus had never exploited you. He died for you. You didn't pay for it. Even the signs and wonders, you didn't pay for it. Why do you want your fellow brethren to go through pains because they want to sleep just in one bed? Because you want to satisfy your desire. Because you have a check. You use it as an advantage over others. Why? Love your neighbor as you love yourself and love God above all things. People are suffering around you. You don't have money to give them. Peter and John said, silver and gold I have none. But what I have is God's anointing and he spoke life upon the man at the beautiful gate. He said the man jumped and he leaped. What do you have to give to your neighbor? Other than to exploit someone you know doesn't even have a job. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. I want you to meditate wherever you are. 
look into your life and say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me this morning. Cry wherever you are. This is the only prayer we want to pray today. It's a thanksgiving service. Desire the spirit of the living God to fall upon you now. In the name of Jesus. And while we are praying, he said God does not place his blessing on a mess. He said because iniquity has separated me from the people. If you don't know Jesus and you want to come to him, this is an opportunity to do so. He said redeeming the time for the days are evil. Wherever you are, lift your hands. You want to come to the King of Glory to say, Lord God, I come to you. I want to repent from all my ways. Wherever you are, lift your hands. For those who are watching online, lay your hands on your chest. If you want to give your life to Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I know that you died for me on the cross of Calvary so that I will be saved. Say, Lord God, I confess all my iniquity and sins to you. Say, Lord, come into my life. That as I place my hands in the plow, may I never look back in the name of Jesus. Cry one more time. Say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Open my ears attentively to hear your word. Say, let this word be absorbed in my heart. Say, let it diffuse to every areas of my body and let my life communicate your glory from now on in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have heard us. For in Jesus mighty and powerful name we have prayed if you're blessed this morning shout hallelujah. hallelujah if you will tell someone about jesus shout hallelujah. hallelujah now before the thanksgiving proper please i want the children's department please uh we just quickly uh, let the children come forward as the children will do their thanksgiving the, the next one uh will be for special thanksgiving general thanksgiving and all that so please we just want the children to quickly come wherever they are please Hallelujah. Please, this is a time for Thanksgiving. The Lord has been good to you all through the year, the last month. Please, this is time to just give praise to God. And you cannot do that by sitting down. So be on your feet as we join together to, thank, to give thanks unto the Lord.
praise you, Lord. I go 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 I want to thank you for the children that you've blessed us with. Thank you for the resources. Father, accept it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree longevity upon them. You will all be fruitful in all endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus. Your life shall not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and do exploits and keep doing exploits to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, we have worship.
even him do Set me up and kept me from falling Now my life is turned to brand new Oh hi, hi, hi Let's celebrate So we're gonna help We're gonna continue if only i have my way we will continue hallelujah hallelujah psalm chapter 105 verse 1 oh give thanks unto the lord make known his deed among the people we've just done that father we say receive all thanks we receive all thanks it's not enough compared to all that you have been doing 
We left our various countries to, to this place and you have kept us. You have kept us. You have kept us. You have been keeping us. You have been sustaining us. Despite the challenges, despite the troubles, despite the stories, but you have kept us. We know you are continue. You are going to continue to preserve our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The little thanksgiving that we've given, Lord, accept our offering, accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the work that you are doing in this place. Continue with us. We seal all our thanksgiving with the blood of Jesus. Continue to be in our midst, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is the Welfare Department of Dominion Sanctuary International Parish, another Sharjah, Dubai. I'd like to inform us that we will be taking welfare offering on the third of every month from this month. So we will be taking the offering on the 21st which is a, Sunday, uh, a Friday after this coming Friday. And I want to let us know there are some people amongst us that, that want to go extra mile for the Lord here. If the Lord has laid it in your heart and you want to be a part of contributing to the rent of this place, please kindly see the pastor or you see me. Praise the Lord. So our duty as uh, the welfare of the church is to look after our brothers and sisters here in the church. The people that we know that really need help in one way or the other. In the little way the church can assist it's not that we're going to take up all the burdens of the person. We'll reach out to individual or any family that really needs help. That is what we'll be doing as a welfare of the church. So please, if you know anybody amongst us that, that needs help, we are willing to help. The church is willing to help in a very, very small way. Please. Since... Um, Upper Monday will be upper, upper Friday, the 21st. Please, I don't want us to come empty. Let everybody, every one of us, if we are 100 here and we give 5 dirhams each, 10 dirhams each, it's for the propagation of the gospel. The money is not used for the church. It's used for the people that comes to the church. We use it by reaching out to people in need. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Have God blessed you? Are you sure? You're not doing like someone that is blessed. Hallelujah. I love that. Praise God. <laughs> Please, uh, if you are here and today is your first time of worshiping with us, I would like you to kindly be on your feet. Please. Uh, I'm expecting that. Clap, 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 clap. Hallelujah. I see one person. Hallelujah. Two person. Hallelujah. Somebody clap, clap, clap. Three person. Hallelujah. We have three in the, in, in, in the house. This is the essence of church. Four people, four, four people. Somebody clap, 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 clap. Yeah. So, uh, five. Wow, wow. There are five. Somebody clap, clap, clap. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. The Bible says that he that we know soul is wise. So, the mandate is to bring souls to go Christ. Okay. So, please, kindly, uh, he will see you, collect the, uh, your no numbers and, and everything. And thank you 
for coming. He will uh, inform you more of the, the church and uh, everything you need to know. So uh, as we continue this morning, please, we have our prayer still on, online every Sunday. So it goes on by uh, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Every sun Sunday is a night of prayer. So we intercede, we pray. I would love, uh, some of us don't know our Facebook uh, page. So I think uh, if we finish service, please ask for it. Uh, we will give it to you. So you can able to join us on Sundays and pray. And also on Monday also we have Bible studies the, on the same page from 8 to 9 o'clock so one hour join us also and see what God you know uh, we speak to you every time God is speaking it depends on whether we are available to hear let's be on our, on our, on our feet we have come to the end of the service this morning all the glory must be to the Lord, oh, for He is worthy of our praise. Oh, 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 oh. No, no man, man on earth oh, should give glory to Himself. All the glory. grace the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god surely goodness and mercy all the days of our life and